Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Rui, the NMRTA from Chemistry Department. So today, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the NMR machine. And hopefully, after the training, you can use it independently all by yourself. Today, the talk is going to be divided into three parts. First of all, what are the things you have to pay attention to when you get into this room? And second, what are the commands you need to put into the computer to manipulate your NMR experiments? And last but not least, how to make your raw data, which is the spectrum, to be neat and clean. Now let's begin. As you can see here behind me, that is a 500 MHz NMR machine made by Bruker. Inside of the tank, it has really strong magnetic field, which is potentially harmful to people with pacemakers or pregnant women. So if you are in these situations, please ask for help from your workmates. This big magnet is strong enough to destroy watches, credit cards, or cell phone memories. So before getting closer to load your sample, always remember to put all this stuff on the table that is one meter away from the machine. And also, never bring large steel objects for example like heat guns or wrenches close to the machine because that move might quench the magnet. In our campus, both 400 and 500 NMRs are equipped with a crowd probe to increase the sensitivity of the signal. So before login, please always check the crowd platform and you should see a solid blue light on. If you are seeing a blinking blue light or any other situations, that means the crowd probe is either not ready or malfunctioning. Do not run anything and report it immediately. In terms of the sample handling, there are three things to remember. To load the NMR tube into the machine, you should use the spinner. And we have many of those, just pick one that fits the tube properly, not too tight or loose. And second, please always use the sample gauge that we provide to measure the correct sample depth. This is very important, because if you insert your tube too deep, that will get the sample stuck. Whereas, if it's too shallow, you will have the locking or shaming problem during your NMR experiments. And I will discuss about this part later. And you can see on the sample gauge, there are three recommended amount of the sample so please position your tube accordingly. And finally, after inserting your tube into the spinner, please always remember to wipe the bottom part because the dirt in the spinner might stick on the tube and therefore compromise your resolution. To load the sample into the machine, we are using the 24 sample auto sampler which sits at the side of the magnet. This is pretty powerful because you don't have to go up the ladder to change the sample anymore like the old ways. So on the auto sampler, you can see the blue button is for rotating the panel clockwise and the green button is to inject your sample into the machine. Another way to insert your sample is tapping in SX space the number of your sample holder. To log in, simply find your group name and tap in the password. The app we are using is Topspin 3.2. When you open it, you will see a window like this. So this slot at the bottom part is where you tap in the commands. The first command you will be needing is EDC, that is to create a new file. So here are the things you would do. First of all, give a new name to your file. And to make your life easy, keep the title as the same. And then, in the experiment option, we have many packages that have different parameters. Just choose the one you need. And here is the list of experiments with the default settings.
And next, you want to choose the red solvent and update your data path in DIR. Actually, just make sure that is your own folder. Always remember to check the box Execute Get Proso. If everything is done, you're good to go. The next command you are using is ATMA Atma. The purpose of this is to tune the probe frequency. And why? Simply speaking, NMR stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, and we are tuning the probe frequency to match the nuclei so that we have the resonance. Here is a common mistake. If you are doing a carbon NMR right after a proton one, without doing the ATMA, you will have no signal. The next command is rsh space shims.best. The purpose of this one is to load a generally good shim set. What is shim? So shiming is a process to eliminate the inhomogeneities in the magnetic field. Initially, the magnetic field is far from homogeneous, and the sample became slightly magnetized when you insert it in, and that creates the additional inhomogeneous fields. So the process of correcting for these inhomogeneities is called shimming the magnet. So what RSH shims.best would do is, it will put in the most recent good shimming parameters. One thing to remember, the best shimming condition is sample dependent. So that means you will be needing to touch up the shim for each of your sample. Since everything would become magnetic if you put them in such a strong magnetic field, Sample homogeneity and the quality of the tube would be very important. So for your sample, always check if there is any insoluble particles in there. And for the tube, please make sure there is no cracks or dirt stains on the tube wall. So the next command is lock. What is locking in NMR? Long story short, if the magnetic field strengthen changes during the course of the acquisition, the signals would appear broadened and the spectrum would have a poor resolution. So locking is to compensate for the slight drift of the magnetic field. And additionally, locking also calibrates the chemical shift. This process normally uses the deuterium signal and that is one of the reasons why we are using the deuterated solvent to do NMRs. After tapping in lock, you will see a list of solvents. Just select the one you are using. As a beginner, we recommend you to open the lock window, which locates at the bottom of this software. When you open it, you will see a line that is near the bottom, and it should go on the upper half of this window when the lock is finished. If it doesn't do that, that means the locking has failed. You can give it another try. If it still doesn't work, just report it right away. Next, top shim. This command is to finish the shimming. So when shimming is completed, you will see this line going to the very top of the lock display window. Also, when the shimming is done, you will see top shim completed displayed below the command line. After the locking and shimming, we now have a stable and homogeneous magnetic field. And the next thing would be scanning the sample. To begin with, you should type in RGA and wait for several seconds to automatically set the receiver gain. What is the receiver gain? You can consider it as a volume knob in your radio, and this can be manually changed by typing RG. So for example, like carbon NMR, you can always simply use the maximum, which is 203. If you need to change the number of scans, you can tap in NS. Tap in ZG to start an acquisition, and at the bottom left of this software, you can use this window to monitor how is your acquisition going. Sometimes you need a long acquisition such as for dilute samples. It is desirable to look at the transformed spectrum without stopping the acquisition. TR is used in this case. You can tap it in to transfer the data to the hard disk and use command EFP to perform the full rear transformation 
and then you will get the spectrum. There are two ways to stop the acquisition in the middle of your experiment, hot and stop. Hot would retain your data whereas stop would discard it. So here is the spectrum you will obtain after the Fourier transformation by the command EFP. And as you can see the phase is severely distorted and you can correct them automatically with the command APK. Here's one thing to remember. The automatic phasing routine doesn't often do a good job, so you really want to double check the baseline before moving on and correct the phase manually if it's necessary. To take a close look at the baseline, what you're gonna do is scaling up the spectrum to the point where you're looking at the blown up view of it. The objective of the phase correction is to make the baseline to be visually continuous, and you can see here this spectrum, actually the baseline is pretty good. Most of time, this is what you get. As you can see here, many lines are not in phase at all, and that requires you to do the menu phase correction. To do that, find the icon process on the top and then click on adjust phase. This slot has all the buttons you are going to use and you will also see a red cursor that positions itself on the largest peak. Here are two things you are going to play with, the zero order and the first order. So the zero order is to correct the phase of all peaks to the same degree. Whereas for the first order, the correction amount is actually proportional to the distance to the cursor. To use it, you're gonna left click on it, hold it, and drag the mouse up and down until the line is in phase. After phase correction with the command APK, you should type in ABS for baseline correction. And ABS is usually adequate for routine uses. Now it's good for the integration. Just keep in mind that peak heights are not a good measure of the population, so instead you are measuring the peak area. In the process icon, click integrate. The software will automatically integrate most of the peaks for you, but it's really not that smart as you can see here. So to delete all the integrals, you can click on this button. This button right here is to define a new region for the integration, and you can turn it on and off by left clicking on it. After finding all of your picks, you can also right click on your integral to do the calibration. When the experiment is done, tap in EJ to eject your sample.